Yo, what's up guys? Before we get into the video, I just want to say uh, sorry for the uh, the recording. It is recorded in HDR. I did not mean to do that. Uh, I completely forgot I had that thing ticked during the video. But yeah, the colors might look a little bit weird. But I uh, just want to say that is the reason why, because I recorded it in HDR and I didn't mean to do that. So let's get into the video. Yo, what's up guys and welcome to um, a completely different video that I usually do on the channel and that is to rank the Hitman and 1 and Hitman 2 maps all in best from S tier to F tier. Now, because there's so many maps that are here, this is including the sniper maps as, as well as the DLC ones and stuff and Patient Zero, I won't be doing a complete list of like um, top 10 or top 5 or whatever because there's just way too many here to basically have a detailed opinion of each one of them especially when i don't play most of them anyway so uh let's start off on ones in order also the person that made this by tia Mega, uh, the person that made this is ricky um so big shout out to him for creating this hitman version of it so the destination tier maps i'll leave this link of this one in the description as well so for the first one we got is hand to port this is a sniper assassin map that i think it was our second one we got a couple of months ago and overall, I thought it was pretty good. I thought the, the opening briefing was very, very good and well uh, put together uh, compared to uh, the, some of the other ones. And overall, out of the three sniper maps that we've had so far, I'd say probably Hand 2 Pot is the best one out of the three. Probably in an unpopular opinion. I, I think people will probably go for the prison map, the best one. But for me, overall, I had the most fun on Hand 2 Port. So for that reason, I'm going to put it into C. Uh, next one we got the Himmelstein. That's the first Sniper Assassin map we had. We actually got this first released in uh, was it 2017? No, 2018. Yeah. So at the middle of the year we got this. So we got it as a standalone kind of thing. And the one thing I specifically remember about this map is how pretty as an impressive it was, how open it was. Um, there was a lot of challenges where you had to wait a very very long time to uh, get the challenges done. So I remember specifically remembering waiting about 9 or 10 minutes to get a challenge done and if you've missed your opportunity or missed your shot then you have to restart and then start all over again and wait another 5-10 minutes for it to all get into place for you. Plus there's no save options either in Sniper Assassin so yeah it wasn't one of my favourite sort of times playing Hitman 2 I'll tell you that. So for that reason I'm going to put it in the D category. D category I should say. D what am I talking about? I'm not going to put any in F because I don't think any map is completely terrible. In the, well actually maybe one <laughs> we'll get to that though but uh, yeah that, that's my category so far so Hansi Ports and C Emil Steins and D uh, Paris will have to go uh, to S um, it's simply basically the best map in the game isn't it well there's out of three maps that are the best map in the entire game of Legacy and Hitman 2 overall um, I just like the way how, how open the map is you have so many options of getting inside the building and so many options of getting toward your targets and getting them targets themselves. There's a variety of disguises that you can use and all of them are quite effective. And uh, yeah, it's just, I, I love the, um, the huge amount of opportunities there is, how detailed they are, all the exits that are involved, um, how detailed the basement is and how detailed the auction goes and all the little side stories of uh, Haley and the assistant and stuff like that and I just like all these little things all put together as well as well overall as well I think definitely for season one Paris is definitely the best map I think that's the, it's the one they put the most time into and it definitely shows I just think overall it's just definitely the best map overall even though it's quite big but it doesn't actually feel quite big but uh, yeah, Paris, number one for me. Next is Sapienza. Now, this is this is an S tier, but it does have its faults compared to Paris. Uh, for one thing, it's uh, this is a huge map, but a lot of it is quite contained into one area, like the mansion area. Where you've got the beach and you've got the church and stuff like that. They get involved in all the escalations and stuff, which is cool. So you have a lot of the map to explore. But... It doesn't suffer from that problem of you got a big map and all the targets are completely on the opposite sides. It doesn't have that problem because it's all contained into one little area, you know, with a lab and stuff like that. But one thing that does let it down is the virus, uh, the virus objective itself. It makes the mission feel a bit too James Bondish kind of thing, and I think taking out the virus is very limiting to your mission at the end. 
because really there's only one exit you can take from the from the lab so you know what is the point of taking any other exit when there's a plane right there but i always every time i place uh sapiens i always get reminded of the virus and i always think that the virus itself is a whole chore within the mission really and i think that's what lets it down compared to uh, some of the other maps really that are at the top and then top s tier i should say but yeah that virus is a bit of a chore so apart from that everything is just excellent about the map i think we have some really interesting characters especially of silver silvio caruso he is uh, probably one of the best villains in the game in terms of background and stuff like that he's a very interesting character and i think he is very uh damaged in his head and uh Again, there's so many opportunities involved in that. So many uh, different mission stories and stuff like that involved in it. Again, a lot of uh, disguises are working very well in that mission. Very open, just like Paris is. And, uh, but unfortunately, from Season 1, it does start to go a bit downhill from then on. Let's move on. We have uh, Sapienza, the Icon mission. The Icon mission is very, very small. They've cut off the entire mansion area and they've cut off the beach. I don't think it's a very, very good mission overall. It's very limiting. Again, it's one of those missions where, unlike Sapi the regular Sapiens are in Paris, the disguises aren't very powerful. Um, there's very limiting opportunities in terms of doing it suit only. Very quite, it's quite difficult really when it comes to suit only, because really you can only stick them out very limiting ways, a couple of ways. Like basically, you have to get inside this little caravan kind of thing and take him out in there. He's got a bulletproof uh, suit, so you can't just like pop him in the head. Even with a sniper rifle, I'm not sure about the Lancer, but I don't even think you can shoot him in the head. And this sort of mission has a... I'm not sure if it has a sniper assassin challenge. If it did, if it does, then that's, that's just awful. But, yeah. The Icon is not one of the maps I would like to play at all, so I'm going to put it in D. Uh, what's this one? Oh yeah, that's the that's the landslide mission. There's another bonus mission within Sapienza. This wasn't as bad as the Icon, actually. I actually quite liked it. It was very open... In, uh, compared to the icon i mean you can't go in the mansion area in that one either but the rest of the map is still open to you and has some really uh, cool music on on it as well but then the target isn't very good overall because again he's got some limiting opportunities and you have to take him out in a public area there's no really way to properly seclude him there is but very limiting and um and also one problem i have with landslide as well is sometimes you don't want to hear the music all the time so you turn the music down to zero and the music still plays in the background, the one the woman's singing on the stage. And that is a really, really off-putting, especially when I'm trying to make videos and you've got to talk over and stuff like that. So I'm going to put that in C. It's not as bad as uh, the Icon or Hemmelstein, but yeah, I'm going to put it in C. Next we have Marrakesh. Marrakesh is uh, it's not as it's not that bad. But in Season 1, it's definitely not the ones that I'd like to play. Purely because... It suffers from the problem of having targets on opposite ends of the map and you have to there's a lot of running between each one of them it's a good couple of minutes between you get to each target and the consulate building overall is is a very very good area to be it's, you know overall and the school area was eh, i don't really like the school area, but the consulate building as a whole was a very good i just didn't like running from location to location again it just comes down to limiting options and you know, sort of bottlenecking you into areas where you have to go to get inside the consulate building. I mean, you either go down and through the basement, or you go through the front door. And that, to me, is just not good enough. Especially when you're trying to do this suit only. So pretty much, if you want to do Marrakesh, you're forced to bring either a scrambler, or you have to get the uh, the, the key card. And to do that, you're going to create quite a few distractions, or you're going to have to knock someone out. I don't like the being bottlenecked into certain areas and uh, the Marrakesh is very is, is a map that definitely does that sort of thing and I just don't like running between each area especially when getting into the school area is very difficult to do as well and, and one of the basically the only ways that anyone's going to get into the school area in a suit is by going up to the head teacher's roof and going through go down the pipe that way I don't like that and for that reason that's going to go into C as well not one of the maps I like to play Nighttime Marrakesh doesn't have this problem. I mean, you do have a target in the middle of the area, but you can get rid of him quite quickly um, because there is a poison right in. You can poison the food right in the straight in the area. So, and he does get some time by himself. Um, the other guy, the other target, is in the cafe area, isn't he? 
you can seclude these targets and it is quite enjoyable overall at the, at the dark night time atmosphere of Marrakesh and for that reason I'm going to put it into oh, I don't know actually it is better than Marrakesh but is it good enough for B no I'm going to keep I'm going to keep it for C I don't think B is good enough for that because no I'm not I'm just going to leave that at C it is better than Marrakesh though so let's bump that up next we have Bangkok Another map that I really do not like. It's probably... Is it worse than Colorado? Colorado isn't a good map. Because they got four targets and... It's quite difficult to navigate to only and it's very challenging. But on all the challenges are really a chore. But Bangkok, I don't know, half the hotel is blocked off and it's very restricted. And again, it's bottlenecking you into an area where you can only go one way through suit only. You have to go through across the rooftop and get past all them, uh, the crew members inside that little room. And you've got them cleaners in this room as well. And you've got to climb up the pipe and stuff like that. And again, it's just very bottlenecked into one certain route of doing things. I don't really like that restriction. I think it's actually overall thinking about it. It's probably worse than Colorado. At least with Colorado, you have a lot of disguises to use within this building. It's terrible for suit only. But Colorado is definitely the worst for suit only uh, out of the, uh, the season one. But in terms of uh, regular navigation and stuff like that, there's no real good disguises that's great in Bangkok. And Jordan Cross is not exactly easy to isolate either because you have to wait for his routine to get you into the right spot. I'm going to put Bangkok at D. Sorry, I don't, I don't like Bangkok. Actually, no, yeah. I'll put it at D. I don't like Bangkok whatsoever. I'd... I really don't. <laughs> Ken Morgan is another one that you just... Apart from... I mean, how do you get him suit only without poisoning or just shooting that chandelier? How do you isolate Ken Morgan in your suit by, by, by yourself? It's just not very user-friendly, the whole map. I don't like that. Nighttime Bangkok. Basically the same. Not really much difference. I mean, they've, there's, they've sectioned off... And they haven't closed off any of the map of the at the nighttime Bangkok. It has, definitely does have a better atmosphere than regular Bangkok, so I'll put I'll give it that because nighttime does give it its own uh, aura of, of good atmosphere. I think the targets are not as memorable, but I'd prefer how that one. Did. Colorado D. Uh, we all know how bad Colorado is. And there's four targets, and I think that was one of the uh, one of the mistakes for season one. I don't ever think that 47 should have too many targets. Well, I've said this about contracts too. You can always have. You, there's always having too many con, too many targets can ruin it. I mean, it's, even if you get more well, by accident kills, it's a bit suspicious, isn't it? I mean, if it's one or two, then that's fair enough. But when it comes to three, four targets, is Again, it's a chore to do a suit only as well, and not any of them are really in an area where you could seclude them. Maya Pavadi is probably one of the worst targets in the game because you just can't isolate her really. Apart from, well, you can turn on that little machine thing, can't you? This I'm talking, I'm referring to suit only. This, I'm, this, these guys, but uh, yeah, suit only. She's very a uh, difficult target to actually get. I mean, obviously, you're just going to shoot the hay bale. Why wouldn't you? So every time you do a suit only on that map. When you've only got one way of actually doing it, no, a big no-no for me. And uh, I'm gonna keep Colorado at D because even with the escalations and the contracts and everything that's came with, even the challenge packs, that's everything that's came with Colorado, everything that's bad is Colorado. Remember the Mallory Misfortune when you had that um, stalker guy following you around the map? Absolutely terrible. A Scarecrow challenge pack, absolutely terrible. I just had a, such a bad time with this map overall. But I'd still prefer to play um, Colorado over Bangkok when it comes to a regular mission. If I'm not doing suit only, it's definitely the worst. Definitely the worst. But uh, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna leave it in the D category. Next we have the Vector. I actually I actually enjoyed this a little bit a bit a little bit more than regular Colorado. It gives it a nice little. Uh, I like the the weather change and the light change and stuff like that. It was much more vibrant than usual. But. Um, Season 1 version of the Vector was a lot better than this, than Hitman 2's version. In Hitman 2 version, they put a load of trees in, in the way of everything. 
and it takes two shots to blow up um, gas canisters that are done in, in season one it only took one shot so in hitman 2 it just doesn't work overall i'm not sure if it was just an oversight at the, at the fact that uh, things work differently in hitman 2 and because the colorado map changed as well in hitman 2 in legacy um they just didn't uh, update this map i don't know but there's a big tree in the way of the house now so when the where the actual target is when he's walking up this little road here you can see and um, there's a big tree in the way and in season one that tree wasn't there blocking the site so yeah it's not as good as it was in season one but in hitman 2 legacy it's crap moving on we've got hokkaido hokkaido is uh i wouldn't say that's s tier i'd say it's a um i think it's a little bit overrated I think it is a good map overall, but um, I don't think it's as good as people make out to be. It's a small map, and that is not a bad thing. And I think um, the developers should make a lot more smaller maps. I think they strive to make maps as big as possible. And um, I don't think that genuinely makes it a better map. I mean, you've got some big, pretty big maps here with Sapienza. But like I said with Sapienza, the targets are really in one area. So the rest of the map wasn't really uh, a bore or anything like that or a drag. Hokkaido, you have one target that's just in the same room all the time. He's, um, but for a, a target that doesn't move, you have got a lot of opportunities to get him in different ways, and that's kind of that's quite fun. And I also like the fact that you can just throw a magnesium bag at the window and kill him. <laughs> and with Yuki Yamazaki, you've got quite a few opportunities with her as well. I really like the atmosphere of Hokkaido, the music and the snow and uh, all the different opportunities that, that comes with it. I like the fact that you can take out sodas in two different ways. You don't have to go into the surgery area. You can actually just take out the heart by shooting it or destroying it or whatever you want to. And uh, yeah, one thing I did I didn't like about Hokkaido is that all the doors were um, electric electronic key padded doors. So you had to pretty much bring a scrambler or try and get the master key card because it's kind of annoying getting through all the doors that way. Unless you had like a top tier disguise, like the director's disguise or something like that. But yeah, there's quite a few memorable characters in Hokkaido, and it is a good map overall, but I don't think it's as good as Sapiens or Paris. Next, we have the Patient Zero version of Hokkaido. This, I think, is uh, B. I don't think it's good as the regular Hokkaido mode, and uh, the, the I do like the lighting a lot better in, in Patient Zero version, but I don't. I hate the targets. I hate the targets positioning. I hate the fact that they're surrounded by so many people, and I hate the fact that the virus spreads no, no matter what you do. So if you try and you can, you mean you can, you have to pretty much knock out the woman before she gets infected by one of the targets. Now I hate that. I really do I hate that, especially when it's so early on in the mission as well. So unless you pretty much take her out, knock her out every time, then it's very difficult to uh, suit only. And another thing, this mission, which is bizarre, really, it has a sniper assassin challenge. I mean, these targets don't even go outside or any like classic sniping positions. I really think IO Interactive should, when they make these maps, they should have one of the starting locations as a sniper at nest. Get rid of the whole sniper assassin uh, missions overall and include a sniper assassin's like sniper's nest into one of the starting locations and make sniping a viable uh, option to, to do these contracts. And as long as you start in this location and you don't move, or maybe it make, make it so it's a... A position where you can't move or something like that like the vector kind of kind of thing and as long as you are starting that location with a sniper rifle and you're taking out your targets you can still get silent assassin i think it's a good way of doing it if not give us a system where i don't know give us a system where we can use a sniper rifle in snark and classic snipers that's as long as you shoot them from a certain range uh you will still get silent assassin even if their bodies are found just give us a way that make just bring back the fun in Sniper Assassin, please. Because every time you try and attempt Sniper Assassin, you're not going to get Silent Assassin. That's what everyone strives for. But Sniper Assassin, it does not, especially the challenge, it does not belong in this mission. I just don't think they've thought about it. But um, yeah, the virus spreading infections and stuff like that, I didn't, I was not a fan of. But it is a viable option to actually, as soon as they become uh, 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 infected. You can actually go and kill everyone that is infected and they can you can technically get everyone in the map infected kill everybody on the map and still get silent assassin so that's that was fun we did it in the live stream once but yeah it is it is indeed possible the next we have uh man i can't remember what this one is this is sapienza one in patient zero but i can't remember what it's called now the source is it called i think it's called the source i'm not completely sure now but this one wasn't very memorable. I think you've got two targets. One of them starts 
in the church area is very secluded. You need a lockpick to pretty much get into the door. And the bottom area is just guarded by two bodyguards. You've got other, the other target is very well guarded. But if you shoot the bell, you can get one target to meet up with each other. But again, it's very limiting. Overall, it's not my favorite at all to play. I'm going to put that in D. I don't think it's very good. This one, we got the training mission. D. Not really much to say about it. The final test. Yeah. It was all right. I wouldn't say it's... Uh, yeah, I'll put it in C. It was all right. Not really much to say about it, really. There's only one target, and... Um, yeah, I haven't really got much to say about that one. Hawks Bay. Now, this is uh, a mission that's uh, not a lot of people like, really. But when I first played this, I really, really enjoyed the whole atmosphere of it all. As time goes on, when you keep replaying this mission, it does get a little bit tedious having to listen to the target to go on through a conversation she has a phone call she talks to uh, Orson for a while and then she goes upstairs to bed and stuff like that but that takes about takes several minutes anyway let's put it that way and um, that can get a little bit tedious when you don't really want to interfere with the whole situation but overall as a whole entire mission not judging it from repetitive game uh, playthroughs I like it and it's a very small it's a very small map. Well, this they said technically the biggest one. I don't care really because the whole thing's a beach. And then you got like an old nice beach house. But overall, I think it was pretty good. I'm going to put in B. I really like Hawks Bay. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> I liked I liked Hawks Bay. Miami. That's S tier. I think it's better than Sapienza. I'm going to put it in second place. Yeah, I think it's better than Sapienza. You don't have the uh, annoying uh, chore of taking out a third objective. And uh, you can, there's several ways you can get to these targets as well. I really enjoyed the whole atmosphere of, of Miami. It's very atmospheric. It is, it's, it is a very big map still, but it doesn't suffer from the same problems as something like Marrakesh or or uh, or Mumbai, for example. You know where you have the t targets on the opposite ends of the map. You get, she's she's racing around a racetrack, but you can actually just shoot her car and just take her out that way. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, pretty boring when you take her out that way yeah fair enough but you can stop the race and get her in several different ways that way as well there's a number of opportunities you can take her out but again the same thing for uh, the other guy as well can't remember I can't remember his freaking name now mine's gone completely blank anyway yeah I really enjoy Miami and I like everything that we do on it when it comes to escalations contracts or whatever even ghost mode that's my number one map so Miami is a very good map. Uh, Santa Wachuna is another map that lets me down. I like the atmosphere of it, I really do. I really like the layout of everything. I just don't like, uh, again, saying it again, but targets that are on opposite ends of the map. This is pretty much like three maps in one. You've got three entire completely different uh, areas where the, these targets are. And um, it's just not very friendly to if you want to suit only the whole plane play. Especially getting Rico Delgado. He's a pain in the ass to get, really. If you don't take the hippo opportunity, how can you really get him and isolate him? He's quite a difficult uh, guy to actually to take out. Jorge, Franco, he uh, goes into the shed. That's the only time you can really isolate him as well. Again, it's just overall just not very good when it comes to the target itself. The map layout itself and overall it's just, it is very nice, very nice. And it's a, very much like Isle of Scale. It has the same problem with that. The challenges aren't very nice. I mean, you have the, I think you have the hero of Santa Fortuna. We got to do a whole bunch of things. And you talked about 40 minutes. Even if you know what you're doing, it takes about 40 minutes to complete the entire challenge. Well, at least it did for me, anyway, I think. But yeah, just, oh, that was a pain in the ass to do. And then you got that other challenge where you had to drag all three bodies and feed it to the hippo. That was a bit of a pain. But um, I just don't think there's many good challenges within Santa Fortuna and the fact that they're so far apart and very secluded in areas where they're very heavily guarded not a fan I'm gonna put that in that in C it's not as bad as uh, the Colorado or Bangkok but yeah for me that's a B tier Mumbai I'll put that in B it does suffer from the problem that this this map has that when you got a, you know 
free targets on different ends of the uh, of the of the map. But overall, I just like the uh, atmosphere of Mumbai better. Small world, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the whole train station is very well designed. I really like that. The atmosphere, the music, the lighting, the whole movie set thing. I thought that is overall in itself. If the whole area was just the movie set area, it would have been great. It would have been much better than it was. I mean, Darwood Rangan is probably one of the best targets in the entire series. I think he's an interesting character. I quite like him. But, um, yeah. I don't think the whole Maelstrom thing was uh, necessary. I think we should have just had the two targets. I think they were just trying to experiment with something. But as soon as I, f I first played this, uh, when I had early access to it, as soon as I first played this, I wasn't a big fan of the whole you got to find out who it is and track him down and he changes the way he looks every single time. I really did not like that. Until we actually found out a way to guarantee where he's going to be at all times, then it's... I don't know. I mean, when it comes to the Maelstrom itself, when you're actually setting out to do a suit only or a sign assassin for this mission, when you're trying to take out the Maelstrom, what's everyone going to do? They're going to poison that drink, that, that cup of tea, and raise that flag. That's how everyone's going to always get the Maelstrom. And that's incredibly boring and linear to me that you've only got pretty much one opportunity to get him suit only because it's very difficult to isolate him otherwise Vanya Shah again I mean all these three of these targets suffer from the problem that you can't really isolate them very well but there is opportunities to get them out of the areas like for example the purple smoke and stuff but yeah it's not a terrible map but I still enjoy it but it's just not it's not, it's not as bad as these but yeah it's not as good as like Hokkaido or Paris or Sapiens or whatever Next we have Wifton Creek. This is another map that is very atmospheric and I really enjoy playing that mission. Even though uh, it suffers from a problem of that third objective which is a chore just like Sapienza. I'm going to put it in A. It's, it's, a, it's a mission that I like to play. I enjoy playing contracts and escalations in Wifton Creek. And I enjoy the whole atmosphere of it. Music, everything. It just reminds me of a whole like 90s movie or something like that. Like a 90s movie movie set that I'm in. But yeah. Again, that's not a popular opinion. I don't think a lot of people like Wilton Creek overall. Because everyone's saying it's a rip-off of a new life. Which I uh -huh. I don't know. I I like this mission anyway. Yeah, overall I think it was pretty good. The whole atmosphere of it. But yeah, one thing that let it down is the clues. Getting the clues and stuff like that. And there's no real fast way of getting all three clues at once. That was a pain. I wish that they had... These option objectives, they, like for example the virus, the clues, and and uh, all these kind of things. They should... If you've completed them a couple of times, then they should make it an optional objective. Like, you don't have to do it, but you you can if you want to. Just make it an optional objective. Like, pretty much like Art of Scale, where you... You have an option of uh, talking to the the constant and you know luring him, luring him, escorting him out of the uh, off the island. That's what they should be doing. At least with uh, Colorado, they actually opened up the exits. Like if you've completed it more than once, you can take any exit. You don't have to. You're not forced to go into the tornado shelter, which is everyone hated. And that was a nice change. So it'd be nice if they made a change like that to Whittleton Creek and Sapienza, where they're optional objectives. You don't have to take them out. Sapiens, I could sort of understand why they wouldn't do that, but when it comes to Whittleton Creek, I mean, come on. Not everyone wants to play for the story. Isle of Scale. This is a, a map that I really, really do not like. Overall, it's probably the most well-designed map in the game. But, uh, in terms of, like, how it's all laid out and stuff like that. Very, very atmospheric. It's all the things that I like. It ticks all my boxes, usually. But when it comes to the challenges and the targets themselves, man, they are bad. I remember some of the some of the challenges included like hitting people in the head with a shovel while dressed as a knight. I get it, it was a whole it was a whole shovel knight joke and stuff like that. But do you realise how difficult some of these things were? That that other challenge where you had to you disguise yourself as a knight and um, blend in those plinths. There's like six of them dotted around the map. How the hell do they think the player's going to do that without having to kill everybody on the map, pretty much? That was incredibly tedious to the point where I didn't even make a video on it because it was just so 
randomized how that would work out and how it would play out. There's no stealthy way of doing it. There's no set way of doing it. It's pretty much just kill everyone and hope that you're going to be able to do it properly. And there was a, another challenge where I think it was called King of the Castle where you have to throw both sisters off the top of the uh, the tower. And I always remember thinking, Zoe doesn't even go up there. You can get Sophia up there. That's no problem. You can get it over there with the, with the, uh, one of the opportunities with a block. You know, is it... Jeremy, Jer Jeremiah, whatever his name is, you can lower her up there with that and knock him, knock around, throw her off the, off the penthouse suite. There's no problem with that. But it's Zoe. She doesn't go anywhere near that place. No matter what you do, there should have been an opportunity where you can get her up there, or some opportunity where they meet up, or something like that. Otherwise, the challenge is, is just terrible. They even recycled one of the challenges where you had to kill one of the sisters with a necklace. And another challenge was to kill the other sister with a necklace. It was a recycled challenge. And I, very, I distinctly remember there's only very few assassination challenges for this one. And the opportunities just weren't great either. Zoe, as overall as a target, is just terrible. She walks in, in areas where you just can't get her by, by herself. You've got to cheese it in a way. You've got to either cause an accident kill or you have to get her in that area where the little freezer is before she crosses over to the, the funeral area. It's just it's just not very good at all. And overall, it, it was, it's a nice map, overall synthetically, and the atmospheric of it, but in terms of the targets and how easy it is to suit, how hard it is to suit only, and how bad the challenges are. It's between these two, really. Is it as bad as Colorado? No, I'd still prefer to play Isle of Scale over Colorado and Bangkok, actually. At least with Isle of Scale, you've got the Elite Disguise to get around the map a little bit better, because that is a very good disguise to use. I'll say C. I'll put it in the C tier. So the last one we have is the Bank. The Bank is my favourite mission. It is definitely between the bank and Paris overall being my number one and two. There's just something about the bank. I, I just don't know what it is. They've only got one target, but that's not a bad thing. And you could say that she doesn't really move around much. And there's... But this. Look at all the opportunities you have. You have the job interview. You have the uh, interview where you can... Um, you got the fired bank opportunity as well. And stock market crash the vault is so well done the atmosphere of the vault and how it opens and they just nailed it man i thought it was really good and people may say that uh, it's a bit cheesy how it was all set up that you only got like one entrance into the vault and you got a few guards there yeah but come if you got to think but come on it's it's a game at the end of the day you know it's a vault what else are you supposed to, in terms of what they've done they've done they've done it very well and i think overall now, I'm going to say it's the best, actually. I think it's my favourite. I'm sorry, Paris, but I think Bank is the best map. In my opinion now, I love Paris, but I think I just like pa uh, Bank just a little bit more than that. I thought it was very well done. Again, it's just the whole... It's just, I don't know, there's something about it. It's, it's a small map, but again, it's, how come there was stuff like uh, the Bank... Arcado and these other small maps are actually really good. You got other big maps here, for example, like Sapienza. But again, that's all in one area, so really you can't say that's a, 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 a like a whole massive map argument. Again, Arcado is the same. I just like these smaller maps; they're just so much better. I think Hawks Bay. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of these huge maps or areas where uh, maps where you're completely restricted. I like a map that's easy to play nice and enjoyable disguises that are good um memorable opportunities and conversations and things like this within the mission and memorable characters one thing that does annoy me about when you start the bank though is that woman out here i think she, here she is in the picture here you might be able to see her in the little picture but yeah she's here in the picture and she's always uh, saying major asshole holding up the line you, every time she says that it does drive me crazy but yeah Overall, I think that's that's the order I'm going to go in. Top five. Yeah, that's my top five. Uh, the Bank, Paris, Miami, Sapienza, Hokkaido. Um, in terms of these ones.
Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in that order. Then we've got Hawks Bay, Mumbai, and the Patient Zero Hokkaido. For C, what order can I put for this? Um, I would say Sun of Fortuna, put it back up there. On a scale, I'll put it up here. Yeah, that'll do. That's the order I'll go. So that's the, you've got the landslide mission, Marrakesh, Santa Fortuna, Nighttime Marrakesh, Isle of Scale, and two port sniper assassin, the Vector, and then the final test. For D, yeah, no, 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 let's put the end at the back. Yeah, I don't really know how to order D because they're all terrible <laughs> but yeah overall that's my that's my tier list so there we go that's pretty much my opinion for all the missions um i'll probably make no sense doing all this stuff but uh, i tried my best there's no script to just i went off my i'll just have the whole thing no script no bullet points or anything like that but yeah that's my tier list i'm interested to know what everyone else's opinions are of this and what your favorite maps are let me know in the comments this is a different type of video but uh, one that was highly requested and uh yeah there we go let's save that thank you very much for watching let's run the outro so that's going to do it for this video hopefully this is uh you've enjoyed this sort of video I mean, this is it's one thing i've been asked for about two years now um i even made a twitter poll about it whether i should be doing stuff like this then people was like yeah sure there's like 72 percent that said yes so that's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to drop a like on this video. Subscribe if you are brand new to the channel. And hit the bell notification to be notified of all future videos on live streams. Big shout out to the chef or the chef. I can't remember. I don't know how to say his name, sadly. And uh, and Arjiao as well for being top psycho assassin tier members, members of the channel. Thank you to all the new Patreons that we got that joined in August. So this is the updated credit list. So hopefully you can see your name on there and stuff like that. Thank you very much for watching again. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.